Uh, I mentioned some of the other state level programs, the RPSs, the uh, performance based incentives uh, in California, the municipal bond finance programs in Berkeley, and a lot of states are doing a lot of work on this, and they, and, and they really, really want to see domestic demand. And I think more and more states are realizing that it's not really even about the manufacturing, although in, in our new U.S. supply report that Sean Met is working on, we talk a lot about the manufacturing incentives, but I think uh, people at the state level are beginning to realize that the jobs in this industry are at the installation level, not necessarily the manufacturing level. Um, certainly many multiples of jobs created at the installation level, and fundamentally non-exportable jobs. So if you have a demand program, you, 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 you by definition have a jobs program around solar. So I think a lot of people, a lot of state legislatures are getting this simultaneously, and uh, um, and, we, and you'll see some additional incentives. If you project out just a little bit, go out to 2015 with installed system prices, you don't even take into consideration RPSs or rec pricing or any of the other things, but you just leave the ITC, the federal 30% ITC. Um, by 2015, with a 1% rise in, in grid electricity prices that you compete with as a solar installation, some two-thirds of market of the of the US market will be below grid parity. So between now and 2015, you'll go from what we actually estimate to be something like 10 to 15 percent of the market at subsidized grid parity, meaning real-world cash cash grid parity, uh, to over two-thirds and 99 uh, uh, percent will be within five cents per kilowatt hour, which could easily be made up by another half percentage point increase on the annual rate hike and or rec pricing and or uh, carbon pricing and or any other incentive, state incentives that you might want to add on top of it. The U.S. is going to be an extraordinary market. Everybody will be able to use solar cost effectively in a few years. So that's why you all are the smart ones. Um, the, um, the, 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 this is part of why that how much money can be created as we move past that. If you see module prices fall as far as they are, um, even with an increased cost of financing, which we've actually modeled in, um, I, I, I'll have to check this, something between 100 and 200 basis points, uh, additional cost of financing uh, for 2009 and, and declining uh, 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 cost premium on financing over the next couple of years. But the, but the demand curve, some like Germany or, or, or Spain, where they get sort of terminated at the end of the, at, 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 at some point because the incentives become too expensive, in this market, actually more and more uh, demand opens up as prices begin to fall. So you have a fundamentally convex demand curve, which is just really exciting. So in conclusion, um, the, um, you know, I'm not going to repeat all of this, but, but we are really well situated in the United States from a manufacturing point of view, both thin film and traditional um, um, uh, crystalline manufacturing, um, certainly on the polysilicon side. Uh, we're well positioned in the demand front, and, uh, and, and we've got uh, a lot of backing from federal and state uh, incentives. Uh, if, if, if this industry uh, is, is, is going to be a revolution, I, I think now's the time. And uh, our job is just to figure out how to get all those pieces to work as quickly as possible and make as much money while doing it. Um, I'd be happy to take, do we have a moment for five yeah. questions? I know I spun that out. <laughs> yes, sir. What do you, the previous slide or two, what do you back to me if you go back and talk to what uh, right here? Isn't that a great picture? <laughs> it's a wonderful picture. But it's not mine, unfortunately. It, it, it actually was done by NREL and Robert Margolis and some other people, but they gave the permission to do something. That, that's good. But in terms of, um, <laughs> would you say 99% within 5 cents per kilowatt hour? What do you mean? Meaning 99% of the electricity demand in the United States will be able to put solar on their rooftop um, either cheaper than the grid electricity that it displaces or within five cents per kilowatt hour of the electricity it displaces. Under those assumptions, which I think are pretty conservative assumptions. Mm -hmm. And what are we looking at in terms of you make that statement, what are we looking at in the you know, to arrive at that? Well, it'll depend. So, installed cost per watt is a, is is a. Is, is, it would be so nice if it were just. An, uh, uh, I could give you a number. Um, the, um, the 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 reality is that that it differs a lot based on installation size, and we typically think of it separately at the utility scale, or at the commercial scale, or at the residential scale. So, 
the, my guess is, is that to get to that level, the, um, it probably is between two and three dollars a watt, maybe the low end of that range for utility scale systems. It's probably um, uh, three and change, we're right around three for commercial rooftop systems, which are going to be north of 500 kilowatts, probably a megawatt, kind of commercial rooftop, think big box retail rooftops, or in the parking lot or parking garage, on top of the parking garage behind or something. The, um, and, and at the residential level, it'll probably be you know around four. But if you think about that, that's that's almost precisely what the Solar America Initiative targets are. So the, the targets in, in, in that particular case were crafted with a lot of feedback from from industry partners about what was achievable, and then they set them um, uh, a little more aggressively to try to compel improved behavior. The interesting thing about this is that is that there's so much competition, there's so much supply that it will probably be at or near these prices, unlike, uh, I hope, uh, what we saw in Germany and Spain, where excessive incentives on the price of the electricity as opposed to a percentage of the install cost ended up creating artificial price inflation. So I think that, 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 that those Solar America initiative targets, and you can, you can get those from the NREL website, I guess, the, um, uh, the, or, or the Solar America initiative website, uh, it would, would be roughly on target for, for these forecasts. 